Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Wow, what a night. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, April 10. I mean, we can't have spring without those showers. I tell you what, it was loud last night. Big storms overnight. We had big power outages, too, but let's night. It's worse last night. We had about 31,000 people without power. Right now, as we look at the CPS energy outage map, we've got 4,404 customers currently without power. And those storms hit the bulk of the area, so you see their outages right. are kind of spread all across the service area. That's right, but you can stay with us. If you, if you, you can be watching us on your phone or streaming with us, and we appreciate that. Just Make sure your phone is nice and charged if you're going to stay with us on the app. And Mike, I know, I'm sorry, you said this storm kept you up all yeah, day. Yeah, a lot of folks were, you know, kept awake by those big storms as they moved on through here. And power outages, uh, probably because of the wind. 55 mile per hour wind gust out at the airport, 46 is Stinson. And the strongest wind gust I've seen was 63 miles per hour in wind gust over there at Randolph in the overnight hours. One thing you can see on that uh, monitor behind me, behind the graphic, we can see the skyline now as opposed to yesterday when we couldn't see it because the air has really dried out. Temperatures have dropped down to the upper 50s right now and that bottom number, the dew points at 54. That's almost 20 degrees lower than it was at this time yesterday. Remember how humid it was and those northwesterly winds at 12 miles per hour and gusting and that's going to be the big problem today. The dry air and then the gusty wind 75 for high temperature just about normal actually just a tad on the uh, the cool side of things the aquifer dropped down three tenths of a foot some of that rain didn't get as much as we'd hoped for in parts of the hill country but uh, it did fall in the recharge zone so hopefully when the updated uh, numbers come out later on today it's going in the other direction. Still have a lot of oak out there, but it is slowly starting to drop down. Mold is probably going to be higher today and a little bit of pecan. Let's take a look at radar right now, and you can see that the heavier showers and storms have moved on off to the east and really doesn't even look like we're picking up any any more stragglers in behind. We had a couple of them, but boy, those things just came barreling on through here basically right before midnight last night. Computer models did a great job picking that up yesterday. Everybody's in the, uh, the fifth. Well, some 60s still down to the south from uh, Randolph over toward Hondo and 55 right now at Bernie Stage. And again, the drier air is moving on in and more of this dry air will continue to filter on in here throughout the day. We've got wind gusts 26 there at Randolph right now, 29 at New Braunfels and especially out to the west. And with the windy conditions, wind advisories for the hill country doesn't include here in town, but obviously it's still going to be windy. And then with the drier air, which comes in a lot sooner than I know it's starting to dry out here in town, but very, very dry air and very low relative humidities out to the west. So that's prompting the red flag warnings to be in effect. As far as the rest of today, 67 at noon, like I said, 75 for a high temperature. Next couple of days, fantastic. Today, pretty darn nice as well despite the wind, but yeah, fantastic the next couple of days. What about the weekend? Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ. A lot of that rain came like an inch within an hour. I wonder if there's any it ponding did. on the road still. <laughs> it, there's, there still is, and yeah, I'm still uh, trying to catch up on a little bit of sleep from last night after being woken a couple of times because of the storms <laughs> rolling through the downtown area, and that's where we're going to start right here as we take a look. We have a police vehicle here blocking this parts of 35 here at Martin. This is at the downtown at the Y because we have standing water high water that is still there on the lower levels of 35. So right now uh, emergency officials have gone ahead and blocked uh, that stretch of Martin all the way to St. Mary Street. So let's show you the other end of this. So basically if you're coming in from downtown at the Y, I-10, 35 all the way to uh, basically 35 up to 37 and uh, 281, you will not be able to get on the lower level right now due to standing water because of all that way rain that we saw uh, come through this area right now. So as we take a look here at our maps and you do see a little bit of a backup there for all of our folks coming in uh, eastbound right now and uh, on I-10, but again, this stretch here, basically from Martin all the way to St. Mary's Street and uh, up to 37 and 281. Right now, that is shut down on the lower levels of that highway on 35, both directions, north and southbound. Uh, the rest of the city, everything else is looking pretty good. Of course, uh, as people get more on the roads, may we encounter more standing water out there, so we will continue to keep an eye on that. One thing to remember is we do have construction that has started back up, especially on the northeast side, the uh, northeast expansion project over there, 1604. 435 and also loop 1604. So all of that is back after a couple days off due to uh, some time off because of the eclipse. So we will continue to monitor all of that. Mark and Sarah, back to you guys.
Thank you, RJ. New this morning, San Antonio firefighters have been very busy overnight. At least two homes caught fire after being struck by lightning. The first happened on the north side in the 11,800 block of Braysview. There's also a utility fire there around the same time. Thankfully, no one was hurt. However, about 12 people will be displaced for now. The other lightning strike fire happened in the 5800 block of Trent Ranch just after midnight. Firefighters arrived to find smoke showing from a house. Firefighters were able to knock down that fire that was mostly in the attic. No injuries were reported. Not guilty. That's the verdict a jury came to in a murder trial of Tavares Anderson. So Anderson was accused of shooting and killing Malcolm Everett during an argument in 2021 at an apartment complex. Anderson's lawyer told the jury that Anderson shot and killed Everett in self-defense, saying Everett attacked Anderson. He was facing up to life in prison, but yesterday the jury found him not guilty. A UTSA student accused of tagging parts of campus with what's been called anti-Israel graffiti. A source familiar with the investigation tells us the messages included profanity aimed at the Israeli military. There was also a message that draws attention to civilians killed in Gaza, along with Palestinian flags painted on some posters. UTSA's president posted a response on Twitter saying the school supports free speech but has zero tolerance for damage to property. UTSA's police chief says the 21-year-old student faces academic discipline. The student was also arrested on criminal charges and has since been released on bond. President Joe Biden says Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's approach to the war against Hamas is mistaken. Biden's remarks in an interview that aired late last night deepen an already growing rift between the two allies over the war. Those disagreements have compounded over the worsening humanitarian crisis in the Gaza Strip. Israel is expected to make an offensive strike in the city of Rafa. Biden's criticism also comes days after Israel's strike on a humanitarian convoy which killed seven aid workers, most of them foreigners. This morning, there are strong reactions to that Arizona Supreme Court ruling that upholds an 1864 law that puts a near total ban on abortions. The law makes performing an abortion a felony punishable by five years in prison. Some Arizona Republicans are distancing themselves from the ruling. GOP Senate candidate Kerry Lake, a Trump ally, called the law out of step with Arizonans. President Biden called the ruling extreme and dangerous. Well, now to a new whistleblower claim uh, coming forward with claims against Boeing. Those claims involve the safety of one of the company's aircraft. The FAA is now investigating. Andrew's, ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details. This morning, Boeing is responding to claims made by a new whistleblower who says engineering issues with the company's 787 Dreamliners could cause the planes to break apart after decades of use. Sam Salapor claims parts of the fuselage are fastened together improperly. I'm doing this not because I want Boeing to fail, but because I want, I want it to succeed and prevent uh, crashes from happening. Salapor has not provided any documented evidence, and Boeing has fired back, saying these claims about the structural integrity of the 787 are inaccurate. The issues raised have been subject to rigorous engineering examination under FAA oversight. This analysis has validated that these issues do not present any safety concerns, and the aircraft will maintain its service life over several decades. In 2021 and 2022, Boeing slowed production and stopped delivering 787s because of these concerns. It later said it addressed Address the issue and the FAA signed off, resuming deliveries in 2022. But Salapore's lawyer claims those fixes are not enough. They claim that they've done extensive testing and analysis, but haven't shown it internally to Sam or the other engineers. Boeing is already working on improving its quality control after that door plug flew off this Max 9 jet in January. A hearing is scheduled next week on Capitol Hill. The company's CEO already announcing he'll step down. And last month, a different whistleblower was found dead in South Carolina from what authorities said was an apparent suicide. His lawyer claims Salapore faced retaliation after raising his concerns. Boeing in a statement said the claims he's made are inaccurate. Salapore is expected to testify next week on Capitol Hill. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Spurs in Memphis last night were Wimby and our Spurs started their final road trip of the season against the Grizzlies. Spurs fell into a bit of a hole late in the opening frame until Devontae Graham came in off the bench and let the three ball fly from the wing. San Antonio trailed by one at halftime. All right, second half, Spurs take control. Wemby with a slam and later 
in the third, Memphis gets the steal. It's coming up right here, and it's a three on one. Who's going to take on Wimby? No one. No. <laughs> they pass it to the corner. That's good, too, because that's the Wimby effect. So final for Memphis. Spurs win 102-87, a nice big win. Wimby led the way with 18 points, six assists, three games uh, left on the Spurs schedule. That's Thunder, Nuggets, and then the Pistons. Go Spurs, go. Hey, baseball's back. 3-0 San Antonio Missions welcoming the Northwest Arkansas Naturals to a Wolf Stadium for their 24 opening day. Game one of a six-game series, and the Naturals got right to work. Dylan Shroom with a sack fly to right field. Javier Vastags up the third and trots home for the early run in the top of the first. And then in the top of the fourth inning, Luca Tresh goes deep over the left wall. Pretty windy out there as the missions drop their first game of the season, six to three. And that's a look at morning sports. Thanks, Mark. You're welcome. It's 510 and 58 degrees. Part of my job. <laughs> uh, just ahead, how the Motion Picture Association is planning to block websites that contain pirated movie content. And next, a story of two sorority sisters that helped rescue a mother and her two children from a sinking car. So we mentioned earlier, big storms last night. You guys know that, but big changes this morning. It is breezy, it is cooler, and you'll notice a huge change in the humidity. <laughs> okay? Yeah, the, the humidity's gone. Black, I don't black, know what to do. <laughs> Sorority sisters from the University of Georgia are telling their story for the first time after rescuing a mother and her two children from a sinking car. ABC's Eva Pilgrim has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. Do you think it's a miracle that they're both still here today? A group of sorority sisters making a dramatic rescue. After witnessing a car go off a bridge and sink rapidly into a creek, their quick action saving a mother and her two young children. And this morning, they're speaking out to Good Morning America and GMA3. There's still one other kid in the car. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, just like time is ticking. It had been like four to five minutes. His lips were completely blue. Like, his eyes were closed. He was not breathing. I did not think he was alive. We thought we were about to watch someone die. And we'll also hear from the grateful mom about those harrowing minutes. I was scared I was going to lose the little one. I don't know if life would be so much different without them. The ABC News exclusive on this miracle in Georgia coming up on Good Morning America and GMA3. With your first look, I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. 515, 58 degrees. Taking a look outside with Transguide. The road's still wet from all of those storms overnight. You can see some of that ponding still on the roads there, but hopefully drying up as soon as the sun comes up. RJ Marquez is going to give us an update if there's any incidents that we need to know about before you head out the door. I'm certain it's level five. Are you for imprint certain? I'm certain it's level five. Certainty matters. Like the certainty of 4imprint, your home for high quality promotional gear, including exclusive items and brands they love. Printed perfectly and guaranteed to arrive on time. To wow your clients, nail your next event, or inspire your team, check out 4imprint.com. 4imprint for certain. With so many choices, how do you pick the right dog food? Well, you want real meat to be the first ingredient. And you probably don't want things like chicken byproduct meal or whole grain corn. That makes the choice pretty easy. Blue Buffalo. Pick up blue wherever you buy pet food. Oof. Gotta get rid of this. Tell me why. Because it stinks. Have you tried Donnie Rinse and Refresh? It helps remove odors three times better than detergent alone. It worked, guys. Yeah. Downy Rinse and Refresh. Well, if you missed it, take a look at this last night. Ooh, it's in the KSAT garden. Good thing I didn't water last night. You didn't I, listen, need to. I listened to Mike. He said we were going to get some storms overnight. And we did. And I mean, we were just talking about how I think it woke all of us up, maybe kept some of us up. And that wind knocked yeah. down part of, you know, our gate here at KSAT. It was it was pretty strong. And Mike, uh, you're going to show us a picture later about what that wind did. Yeah, just right across the street right there. But just before we get to the RJ, wind gust uh, at the airport, 55 miles per hour, 63 yeah. at Randolph, 46 at Stinson. So, uh, yeah, a lot of trees were knocked down, a lot of tree damage and everything like that. Trampolines, you know, thrown all over the place. Wow, so. what sounds like temperatures were wind speeds. He, just about, yeah. yes.
Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, pretty crazy situation. I know uh, I know it was bad because my dog, she's a little bit older, Aww, so hearing's kind of going, but her ears were definitely perked up yesterday, so I was like, hmm. Mm. And plus, it did get me up a few times. Um, all right, guys, so this just popped up on TransGuide right now. I mean, literally within uh, the two minutes it took me to walk from the traffic center over to the desk here. We're looking at 35 at Schwab Road, and uh, I'm going to have to figure out what exactly is going on here, but 35 at Schwab, this is past... Uh, 1604, obviously, for all of our folks in the uh, short Selma Cibolo area. So we'll continue to get more details on exactly what's going on here, what direction this is all in. Looks like we have a pretty uh, significant incident that might tie up some traffic here for all of our drivers on the northeast side. So again, we will find out more details as we uh, get along here throughout our five o'clock hour. 35 in Martin. Good news here. We have opened up the lower levels here. Remember, uh, basically Martin all the way to St. Mary's that had been closed due to um, <coughs> <clears throat> due to some standing water because of all that rain that we saw through come through our area uh, just uh, overnight hours here. So the rest of the city, everything else is looking pretty good. Again, we'll continue to get an update here on what's going on there at 35. Um, and I do want to clarify, I do want to update something because I was looking through our maps and looking through our cameras. And, and in fact, we do not have construction going on uh, right now because of the weather. So I wanted to just double check that. Um, I know that they had planned to get all of that work restarted in uh, all of those main spots where they usually do a lot of construction. So that has been cleared out, especially out there, Topper Wine, Judson. But again, that one incident there at Schwab Road kind of causing uh, some delays there. So again, we'll continue to get more information on this as we move along. All right, Mike, uh, it was outside. Last oh, night. yes, indeed. And like I was talking about, this is just right across the street when all that heavy, heavy rain was coming down in the winds. And yeah, that's a decent tree limb that was snapped off right there. And this is just one example of a lot of tree damage that was done by those very blustery winds with those severe storms that moved through right around 10, 11 o'clock, depending on where you were. And the one, the other problem that happened was the fact that, or what added to it, remember yesterday morning we were talking about how volatile the atmosphere was, and then we really cleared out a lot more than expected in the afternoon, and all that heat just added to kind of the, the volatility, and so that's why we did, and even though those uh, severe storms were forecast to move through, they really, really packed a punch. The other thing right now is we can see the skyline, so things have dried out. Here's what it looks like as far as the 12 hour rainfall going back into last night and most of the area did get some rain uh, about two inches there on the uh, northwest side of town over there in southern uh, Medina County. Just that one little bullseye right there and then about two and a half inches right there along 10 over toward uh, Seguin and in portions of Guadalupe County a little bit closer in the airport picked up just shy of an inch and a third of rain officially out there and again a lot of it came down. That was the other problem at the airport. It was an inch of rain in less than one hour. So it was those storms moving on through and just buckets were dumping down in not as much rain up in better portions or, or the, the heart of the recharge zone, I should say, and where a lot of the drought is where we could really use it. But at least there was a little bit out there, so we'll take anything we can get. Dew point temperatures have dropped down 17 degrees compared to this time yesterday. 25 lower in Rock Springs, 28 lower in Uvalde, and 31 degrees lower in Carrizo Springs. That's the dry air that's coming on in here, and this dry air is going to continue to filter in for the next couple of days. But then on top of the winds that that are going to be very blustery. We're looking at 35, 40 mile per hour winds. This is throughout the afternoon today and especially out there to the west. And uh, that's what's prompting the wind advisories as well as the red flag warnings with the really dry air in place. So a very high fire danger, even though we did have and obviously some more rain right here in our western counties just west of town. So not as high a fire danger, but yeah, it's going to be very hot or very high today as far as that fire danger with those strong winds. We are going to continue to clear out throughout the morning if it has not already cleared where you are, but very blustery all day long. Going to make it up to 67 at noon today and then 75 for a high temperature. Then over the next seven days, like I said, the next two days, today, tomorrow, and then third Friday, pardon me, are going to be just fantastic. Pleasant mornings, kind of coolish, 30 degree rises in temperatures, more clouds Saturday. Look at the low temperatures up in the 60s. Good indication humidity is coming on in here. Warm and humid over the weekend. And we are looking at right now that it's going to be hot and humid as we head in toward the first day of Fiesta next week. More after this. Stick around.
In today's Tech Bites, a new crackdown on movie piracy. The Motion Picture Association is going to work with Congress on new rules blocking websites with pirated content. The group says it has cost over a billion dollars in movie ticket sales. A similar effort in 2012 stalled over free speech concerns. Google just unveiled a new AI-powered video creation tool. It's called Google Vids, billed as your video editing, writing, and production assistant all in one. It will be part of the Google Workspace, allowing you to collaborate with colleagues in real time in the browser. And YouTube Music has a new feature, the Activity Feed. will alert you when your favorite artists release new music. It will appear under the bell icon normally used for notifications. Subscribing to artists and or channels will help you take full advantage of the feature. I was hoping to get this alert for new YouTube Music, but I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Those are your Tech Bites. Mm, okay, 528 and 58 degrees. After school child care averages between 60 and $100 a week per child. Just ahead how Texas A&M San Antonio is trying to make things a little easier for students who are also parents. And ahead on GMSA at 6, we're gearing up for the San Antonio Book Festival this weekend. We'll meet an upcoming author who calls the Alamo City home. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday, April 10th. Good morning. It was loud last yeah. night with those storms, and I know a lot of those storms and brought a lot of wind, which led to a lot of power outages. We did have some power outages this morning, and they're making big progress in the overnight hours. So late last night, there were about 30,000 customers in our area without power. Last half hour, down to uh, about 4,000, and now it's down to under 3,000 customers currently without power. And a reminder, if your power is out anytime during severe weather season and your smartphone is charged, you can stream us live on ksat.com and on the ksat app. We begin with RJ and traffic troubles, especially on the far northeast side. Yeah, guys, this is going to be affecting all of our drivers in the Cibolo area, the uh, Schertz area, the Selma area for all of our folks headed out there in Comal County. So what we're looking at here is uh, what we saw a little bit earlier. It looks like a, an 18 wheeler uh, that potentially their uh, their haul or their trailer here caught fire. So we have uh, fire department officials here. That's going to be the blinking lights right here that you're seeing that on our far uh, right hand side here, the lower part of the right hand side and uh, there's a fire department truck right here we saw some uh, firefighters out there trying to put out some sort of fire here at this trailer so again uh, this just happened maybe about uh, 30 minutes or so ago so we're just trying to get more details on what exactly is going on but again northbound 35 at Schwab Road right now this is going to be past FM 1103 for all of our drivers in this one part of uh, Comal County so you do see that traffic starting to build up a little bit here so 11 1103 also known as uh, Hubertus Road uh, so for all of our folks in in that area. So one big thing here, right lane has been shut down. It uh, looks like they're going to be out there for a little while because again, we had fire department officials that were putting out uh, what looked like a some type of fire or at least a hot spot there in that trailer. So right lane has been shut down 35 northbound at Schwab Road. As far as San Antonio proper, things are looking pretty good uh, in most parts of our city. Despite some of the heavy rain that we saw last night, we did have the lower levels of 35 that were shut down in the downtown area, but uh, that has been cleared out and uh, police have have cleared the scene there so traffic is moving through the lower levels of 35 downtown but again biggest thing that we're monitoring right now 35 northbound we have the one main lane right now closed uh, the right lane the right hand lane and we also have the access road here closed at 35 at Schwab Road we will continue to follow this and give you more details as they become available Mark and Sarah back to you guys then we're going to Mike. Going to going to weather, and let's go back in time to 9:30 last night, and that's when everything really started blowing up. As you can see, just to the north, right there around uh, Bernie, over towards San Marcos, we had a severe thunderstorm warning that was posted. Notice that green line from Shirts down to San Antonio. That's that uh, gust front from those big thunderstorms, and so the winds really started to pick up. And then, as you can see, more warnings were issued, and those heavy storms moved on through here. They moved really, really fast, but dumped a whole lot of rain very quickly as they continued to work their way off to the east and it was about an inch in less than an hour out there at the airport and that's why we did have uh, some of that, that minor flooding and there may still be some standing water just because that was just like a bucket getting dumped on us and moved on through windy conditions too as that moved on through as we've been talking about out at Randolph winds uh, were clocked to the 
peak wind gust, and that was about between 10 and 11 o'clock, right around uh, 63 miles per hour, 55 out there at the airport. Those were the gusts. Now, it's going to be very gusty today, not that windy. We're at 58 right now. Dew point still at 54. We still have a few clouds out there, but things are starting to clear out. A lot of the clouds are starting to break up a little bit, and that dew point temperature is down at least about uh, anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees here in town compared to this time yesterday. The Cooler, drier air will continue to filter on in here. We won't drop down that much from where we are as of right now, just because we still have some of those clouds out there. But with these dew points that are much, much lower, they will continue to drop down throughout the day. And then we've got those wind gusts right now, 27 out there at Lost Maples, 29 in New Braunfels, and the wind is going to be gusting all day long. So we've got wind advisories and then also red flag warnings going into effect just after noon today up until just after dinner time. Very high fire danger out there. Oak is on the high side, although it came down again. Remember last weekend we were, what, 25,000 plus. So hopefully we are kind of on the the downward side of the peak of the oak season. And of course, the updated count is going to be coming out later on today. Sunny, mid 70s, windy. We're going to see gusts 40 miles per hour, especially in the hill country. Again, those red flag warnings and wind advisories. Tomorrow, Friday, great looking day. Sunny, pleasantly cool mornings, warm afternoons up in the low 80s. Then the humidity comes back in here, basically warm and humid over the weekend with increasing clouds, especially on Sunday. We go into next week, a lot of clouds hanging around here and basically just hot and humid. We're looking at mid and upper 80s, some 90s around here, plenty of humidity. Of course, Fiesta starts a week from Thursday and it's going to feel like Fiesta weather. More on the forecast and a closer look at the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Mark. Thank you, Mike. This morning, Kerr County Sheriff's deputies have made an arrest in a deadly shooting in Kerrville. Deputies say the suspect is now charged with murdering his wife. We're told Isidro Arias Benitez is accused of shooting his wife, Ana Maria Puente Ortiz, while the couple's children were in the home. Deputies say they arrived at a home on Corbin Circle in Kerrville Monday night, not far from I-10, and found Ortiz with a gunshot wound. She was taken to the hospital where deputies say she died. Now the children are safe with family members. In Comal County, 63-year-old Cynthia Schubert is charged with murdering 62-year-old Edward Canales from Canyon Lake. The Comal County Sheriff's Office says Schubert shot and killed Canales March 12th and then turned herself in. Sheriff's Office says the two had been in a relationship. We also want to remind you, if you or a loved one is experiencing a domestic violence situation, it does not have to continue. There is help out there. So again, the QR code on your screen right now. It'll take you to a list of free resources where you can get the help you need. The price of a postage stamp could rise again in the next few months. The post office is recommending raising the price of first class mail forever stamps from 68 cents to 73 cents. Stamp prices already went up this year in January. If the change is approved, it would take effect on July 14th. The Postal Service also recommended price adjustments for other special service products, including certified mail and money order fees. However, there will be no price increase for post office box rental fees. The parents of a Michigan school shooter have now been sentenced for their role in their son's rampage. ABC's Lionel Moise reports on the emotional day in court, including statements from James and Jennifer Crumbly in front of the victim's families. This morning, the historic ruling after a deadly school shooting, James and Jennifer Crumbly sentenced by a Michigan judge to 10 to 15 years in prison each for their son Ethan's mass shooting at Oxford High School in 2021, which claimed the lives of four students. These convictions are not about poor parenting. These convictions confirm repeated acts or lack of acts that could have halted an oncoming runaway train. The judge sentenced the Crumbleys beyond the suggested guidelines, citing the catastrophic impact of their crimes. They were convicted of involuntary manslaughter, the first parents in the U.S. ever convicted for a child's mass shooting. They were accused of ignoring several warning signs, buying Ethan the gun, and refusing to take him home after the school called about Ethan's disturbing drawings that morning. James Crumbley speaking for the first time in court. I am sorry for your loss as a result of what my son did. Jennifer Crumbley tried to walk back a comment she made at her trial when she said she would not have done anything differently. My answer would be drastically different. If I even thought my son would be capable of crimes like these. 
The victims' families also testifying. It is devastating and heartbreaking that it doesn't appear that either of you cherished or even wanted your son. But I wholeheartedly wanted and cherished mine. Both James and Jennifer Crumbly will get credit for the 858 days they've already served behind bars. Their son, Ethan, was already sentenced to life. The judge says all three will serve their sentences in separate prisons. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. It's beginning to look a lot like Fiesta. And throughout this month, the San Antonio Food Bank hopes to collect 1.33 million pounds of food. It's meant to celebrate the 133 years of the Battle of Flowers Parade. This year's theme is Viva Amor, and the Grand Marshal is CEO of the San Antonio Food Bank, Eric Cooper. The organization is collecting food for the community. I do all I can to set the table for 105,000 people each week, and we couldn't do that without the generosity of many. And making this year's Battle of Flowers Parade a tradition of giving and service, um, an opportunity to help support the food bank in setting the table for our community. Um, it just doesn't get any better than that. It's been more than a year of work to get ready for the Battle of Flowers Parade, Viva Amor 2024, taking place April 26th. I had the opportunity a couple weeks ago to sit down with Eric Cooper mm -hmm. to do an in-depth interview uh, for our Fiesta Battle of Flowers special. And I learned so much about him and I'm excited for all of our Battle of Flowers coverage. I've seen him a million times on our coverage, but I've never met him in person. You've never met? Not, oh my yep. gosh. Yep. He's a wonderful person. Can't wait to meet him one day. 541, 57 degrees. Going to college when you have kids can make things much more challenging. Up next, how Texas A&M San Antonio is hoping to make a generational impact impact for the community. Outside with live cam. Boy, big changes in the weather after those storms swept through last night. We're down to 57 degrees and it feels cooler out there with a pretty stiff north north breeze. 544 getting to graduation is getting easier for some students at Texas A&M San Antonio. The campus now offers after school child care. As our Patty Santos explains, it's a boost for parents trying to build a better life. Monica Tijerina and Jasmine Martinez are both single moms attending Texas A&M San Antonio. This semester, they're getting extra help to finish their degrees. After we've been enrolled here and they accepted her, I thought, wow, I, I might do it this time. Yeah. You feel like you're going to finish your degree? Yeah. Their kids attend after school care on campus while their moms go to class, get tutoring, or study. It's honestly probably the best thing that's ever happened to me because it's been stress free. The Young Jaguars program is free of charge for students who are Pell Grant eligible or single parents, saving them time and money. I come to class three times, sometimes four times a week and I'm just able to come and drop her off without having to figure out, you know, who can take care of her within the family. Well, Catherine O'Brien is director of campus child care. She hopes this program makes generational impacts for the community. If we've got, you know, somebody who can't get child care, then they can't work. And so that makes an impact on the overall economic crisis that we're having. The idea to open the daycare started when O'Brien noticed her students were struggling. We started seeing um, students come to class and having to bring their children to class with them or bringing not being able to come to class because they didn't have child care for their child. Um, that really was kind of a red flag for us. After school, child care averages between 60 to $100 a week per child. For some, it's also not available. According to the children at risk.org, A&M San Antonio zip code of 78224 and many Southside communities are in a child care desert. Providing a space here at the university has been hugely impactful. A young Jaguar program is made possible through a federal grant. Mama, what I this one, this one be for, you. for Monica and Jasmine, their kids are their biggest motivators to attend class. She doesn't want me to miss a day. If there's a day that I don't want to come, she makes sure we come. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. It's 547 and 57 degrees. This morning's big traffic trouble spot is way out between Selma and New Braunfels on I-35. You're going to see a lot of flashing lights in one of these cameras when it pops up. There's 410 at Harry Wurzbach, but RJ's going to help us out. He's going to show us that one shot. It's going to come up here in three, two, one. 
All right, guys, let's get you updated right now. 550 on this big situation that we're seeing out there on the far northeast side. 35 northbound at Schwab Road. We have a uh, vehicle fire now confirmed by the Schertz Police Department. They are on the scene right now. They also have fire department crews out in this area. Northbound 35 right now. You see the right lane is blocked on the main lanes, the main parts of 35. We also have the access road that's blocked right now as fire department crews from Schertz and the surrounding areas work on this vehicle fire. Earlier, it looked like... Uh, uh, crews were still kind of putting out some hot spots as far as um as far as what may have been in this trailer. So we're continuing to get more information on this. Again, Shirts Fire Department, Shirts Police Department, they are on the scene right now. Let's show you our maps right now because we are seeing some buildup here from uh, from basically Schwab Road all the way to Country Club Boulevard and even going a little bit further back to Hubertus Road and also e FM 1103. So again, the right main lane closed in this area, something we will continue to monitor. As we take a look here in the San Antonio proper area, metropolitan area, biggest thing we're seeing here uh, in this area is going to be a crash. This is going to be off of uh, 90 at 410 at Ray Ellison Boulevard. So uh, off the highway, but still an important uh, street that a lot of people, especially on the west southwest side, use. But uh, this is the biggest thing we're seeing right now. We have a vehicle fire, Shirts Fire Department and Police Department on the scene northbound 35 at Schwab Road. All right, Mike, there was these storms were last night. Wow, yeah, I mean, the, the heavy downpours, the wind, but then also there was a lot of reports of hail. This is over there in West Bear County, and it wasn't real bad. There were some uh, reports. I'm going to show you some pictures later on this morning of almost quarter sized hail, but this was uh, basically pea marble size, but yeah, it, there was a whole bunch of it out there covering that deck. So thank you very much for the KSAT Connect picture. Of course, these are we just really, really love those because obviously helps us tell the story, helps get for other folks that didn't experience that. And now look at the uh, skyline. We can see it. It's nice and crisp and clear because the air has really dried out compared to yesterday. When we couldn't even see that skyline. Look upstairs in the atmosphere. And first of all, those the moisture just blowing up there. Those are those big storms that blew up last night. And now we've got this really dry air, not only here at the surface, but also upstairs in the atmosphere, which means we're going to have some gorgeous blue skies today. Wind, that's uh, the big issue. Big issue last night, gusted at the airport, 55 miles per hour, 63 out there at Randolph, and it is going to stay gusty all day long today, especially in parts of the hill country. Where we're going to be seeing these gusts approaching 40 miles per hour later on today. And with the dry air, out there to the west. That's what's prompting the red flag warnings. And then we do have wind advisories for some sort of wind advisory red flag warning for the entire hill country and of course down to the south as well where you didn't have as much in the form of rain last night. As far as today, we are going to be staying pretty steady for the next couple of hours. We're in the upper 50s right now here in town. Still have some clouds out there. Windy conditions won't let us get as cool as what we could get. And then we're going to be seeing plenty of sunshine all day long. 67 at noon, 75 high temperature today. Actually a couple of notches below normal. Windy all day, even going into this evening. Now, humidity stays low the next few days through Friday. Humidity is really going to work its way back on in here, though, as we go into the weekend. It looks like it's going to be pretty hot and humid next week. Gorgeous the next few days, low 80s, kind of coolish in the morning, maybe a jacket in the morning. Notice the 30 degree swings in temperatures, dry air. That's not the situation over the weekend. And then lots of clouds next week. A lot of those high clouds in here, maybe a couple little sprinkles here and there. And like I said, hot and humid as we look toward the first day of Fiesta week from Thursday. More after this. Good morning, and it's great to be with you. Coming up here on GMA, we'll start with the abortion ban in Arizona, upholding a law dating back 160 years that almost entirely outlaws the procedure and what it all means for voters in November. And millions are in the path of these heavy rains and flash flooding and the tornado threat. I'm going to be all over this second highest threat that there is. Also, Kirsten Dunst here live in our series Comfort Food America, taking us to Houston for some down-home cooking. Ahead in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, we're taking a deep dive into the case involving UTSA, UTSA student rather, arrested for graffiti on the main campus. Plus, the Spurs have finally reached 20 wins on the season. We've got the highlights from Wimby's block party in Memphis last night. And big traffic troubles right now out there between Selma and New Braunfels on I-35 at Schwab Road. We've got uh, the cones out right now and traffic slowing in that area. RJ will have an update coming up in a matter of minutes.